The following presentation was recorded by View Digital Media at the inaugural Southeast Linux Fest in Clemson, South Carolina on June 13, 2009. For more information about the Southeast Linux Fest, visit southeastlinuxfest.org. Thank you. I, I, I appreciate you clapping because I'm sure you're not going to be clapping at the end, but uh, I appreciate you all coming. This is, wow, this is a fantastic turnout. It's, uh, uh, open source and education is what I'm going to talk about, and I, you know, I threw this funny little tagline. Uh, you know, our children have butterflies in their brains. It tends, you, you know, if, you're, uh, if you live in America and you've been educated, chances are you, you, know, you use Windows or Macs uh, in the education system. And uh, it's been very hard to, uh, you know, get the adoption of open source and education. I'm going to talk to you about that. Uh, so away we go. Now, uh, keep in mind, I am a network engineer really bad with slides. I apologize. Bad speller. Yeah, uh, I, I apologize. And Dave Yates apologizes, too. I don't know if he's here. But anyway, um, when did the community get taken out of education? The... You know, it, do, it does take a village to raise a child. That's an old adage. I believe it's actually from the Bible. Um, and at some point, we kind of became disconnected with our local education. Um, you know, I'm sure many of you have, I have kids in, in school systems, but we're not as involved as we used to be, you know, uh, uh, and, and it's kind of a shame. And it, it's, you know, if we all sit back and do nothing, nothing's going to change because the fact of the matter is right now, it's, it's, it's in pretty bad shape. Um, and we really need, you know, we are, we are the community. We're all community-oriented people. That's why we're here, right? Uh, so uh, just think about this. I'm not, the, uh, just think about that. I, this is where I live, by the way. Uh, it's a view, yeah, it's nice. Um, I don't know, it's Wikimedia, it's, uh, Creative Commons, yeah. Uh, but yeah, so, so just keep this in mind as we, as we progress through here. Open source, and education go hand in hand. Any, any Linux users here? Yeah, there are a couple, right? You know, wh where did Linux start? And why did it start, right? It wasn't an educational institution. Some of my favorite, now, now obviously all these projects did not start in educational institutions, but some of them did. One of my favorites, Drupal, you might have heard of it. It's a you know, web content management system, started at a college, uh, uh, or a university, I should say. Um, you know, you know, Moodle actually started by K-12 educators. It's an online uh, course management system used in K-12 education, which I'm going to talk a lot. I, I work for a community college, but I've only been there for two weeks. I've, I was in K-12 education uh, for five years as a network manager. So a lot, I'm going to talk a lot about K-12 and, and what's going on there and, and, and the dire shape and all. You're, you're going to go out charge. And yeah, okay. All right. Um, but yeah, so, you know, it, it, really we should see more uh, open source in education. Why don't we? I mean, when you're, if you go to college for engineering, many engineering schools require you to run Windows on your system. What? Why? Why is that? Why, why are we so entrenched in this culture that, 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 that a school that promotes engineering would, make, would, would not want you to run Linux on your system? I'm not sure. We'll, we'll talk about it, though. In case you weren't paying attention, the economy done broke. Anybody, anybody listening to the news lately? It's a little scary. A little scary. I almost couldn't afford gas to come here, right? This is a really cool picture. Uh, this was a protest in New York City uh, about an un unemployment protest. Um, so the, the, these people aren't actually in, in line to get a job. It was a protest against unemployment uh, several years back. But, patient. but, you know, open source and education, and this is a big part of it, really is about fiscal responsibility. I live in the second poorest county in Virginia. We have 30% uh, people of the people live in poverty. I mean, when I say poverty, we still have dirt floors and houses, and we still have no plumbing in some houses. Did you realize this even goes on in the United States? It's true. And meanwhile, you know, we're, we're requiring these kids to buy licenses for, for office so they can do their homework, which I'll talk about in a few minutes here. But also, the school system is willing to pay extraordinary amounts of money on proprietary software when there are free and open alternatives, and it's crazy. Uh, we, you know, we, we almost lost 80 teachers this year because of financial problems. It's serious. And, you know, I, of course, free and open software isn't all about the financial factor, but it's pretty big when you're talking about firing 80 teachers. Maybe we can save that money somewhere with, with free and open source software, right? Or at least think about it. 
at least consider it. Right, all right. But it is about social responsibility, right? Johnny's family couldn't afford dinner tonight because Johnny's mom had to buy Office 2007 so he could do his homework. Funny, but true and scary. Why should Johnny have to buy a license when there's free and open alternatives to do his homework? Insane to me. Um, I'm going to talk about some of the initiatives that I've done in K-12 and the money that we've saved. But in reality, this, this is about social responsibility. Why would, the gov why would a government entity, any government entity, require students to purchase license from a proprietary company when there's free and open alternatives? Insane. Just saying. And then there's the other social responsibility aspect. Do you want your kids graduating from college or K-12 with the concept that the only thing in the world is Microsoft? There are alternatives out there. Choice is a wonderful thing. At least let them know what it is. If they still run Microsoft, fine. But wouldn't it, I mean, I think we all, we don't need everyone running Linux, or maybe you do want that. But I think we can all agree that we want people to know Linux exists. Because right now, if you stop someone on the street and you say, hey, I'm a Linux user, they're like, ooh, what the heck is that? You know, they have no idea. Okay. The truth, <laughs> yeah. Uh, the truth is out there. You just have to look. Entire governments are moving to open source. Um, Slowly but surely, Brazil is huge. I mean, huge. I, I think you probably all know this. And I am preaching the choir here, aren't I? <laughs> but Brazil, China's got their red flag Linux, very appropriately, scarily named. <laughs> um, India is moving towards open source Russia. Now, there's been some really good initiatives in Germany. Um, France has their entire police force now, I think, using Linux. Yeah? And the government. Really. So the French government has... Fantastic. Spain education system runs Linux, uh, so, some initiatives in Austria. But I want you to look at the top half of this list. And see, you know, going a little bit back to fiscal responsibility, you, you definitely see some developing nations there, and, and there are many, many more developing nations that are using open source software. Why? Right? It seems pretty obvious to us, doesn't it? If only it were obvious to our legislatures. Right? Uh, so yeah, where is the US? Where is the US? Where is the U.S.? They're certainly on this, the truth is out there list. Um, the truth is that the adoption of open source is, is horrible here. Uh, you know, you, well, let's see what's next. Oh, oh, wait, that's the positive slide. Well, I just want to say, think about your local area. Do they run Linux? Do they run open source software in government entities or in your schools? Is there anyone here that, that has Linux in the schools locally? Fantastic. That's awesome. And what about, oh, so there were three hands, right? There's a huge room full of people from all over the place, and there were three hands. Um, how about just open source in general? Do you know if your school systems or local colleges run open source at all? Hey, there, now there's some more hands, right? Which is interesting. There is steps you have to take to get these things into schools, and it's not about just throwing Linux on a desktop. But I'll, I'll talk about that. But let's talk a little positive about it. Some states have gone ahead and made, you know, relatively large initiatives to um, moving towards open source and uh, pretty much failed miserably. No, uh, but, but there, you know, it's, it's been hard. Um, California's got some really cool uh, Linux terminal service project uh, uh, initiatives going on where they're, you know, using thin clients, uh, server, server client architecture and running Ubuntu in labs cutting down on price for students, right? Fantastic. Massachusetts, awesome. Uh, they tried to, you know, try to implement ODF in the government, but which was an absolute disaster. But, but thank you for at least blazing the trail for us so it's a little bit easier to discuss with <laughs> government now. Um, also, Massachusetts, MIT, right? Uh, they have their open courseware, which is awesome. Uh, if anyone, if you have not checked out MIT's open courseware, basically everything in MIT is online. And if you don't want a degree or anything, you can go there, you can learn whatever you want. You want to learn physics? It's awesome, right? Just go there, download the, the download stuff, and watch it. Now, that's in the nature of open source. Obviously, we're getting into licensing Creative Commons and stuff, but still, that's, that's an awesome, awesome initiative from MIT, right? Um, New York has some very interesting uh, new law that's just gone in. It, it's a procurement law. So now when you, pre, pre, you know, procure a, a software or hardware in New York, you have to include open standards 
in the procurement, which is really cool because what that means is basically proprietary companies have to abide by open standards through procurement laws in New York State now. Very interesting way to do it. Really a step in the right direction. Um, Virginia, yeah, that's where I'm from, so I'll talk about that a little bit. Uh, and Indiana has some great, great initiatives in their schools. Uh, they're, they're actually really shining star uh, as far as uh, a lot of open source uh, adoption. The Josh story. <laughs> the Josh story. So I, I volunteer my time once a year. I go to the high schools and I talk to the seniors. And I talk to them about Linux and I talk to them about advanced computing and I tell them about the real world and that Microsoft is not the end all be all. Really cool, the kids love it, right? Because right, the, the problem in this whole scenario certainly is not with the kids, right? Kids adapt, they, they change, they don't care, man. They, technology, they can use it. You put it in front of them, they're ready to rock and roll, right? So really, I get really good reception uh, uh, by the students. Well, I just changed job two weeks ago, started a new job. And first thing out of my mouth when I walk in the door is, so who's running Linux? The huge community college system, it's nine locations, we've got you know, thousands of students and stuff. Who's running Linux? I say, one guy. Like, oh, really? <laughs> one, one guy runs Linux, that's it? Yeah. OK, what, what's, his, what's his name? Josh. I'm like, oh, right, all right, I'll have, to, I'll have to meet Josh. So he's in my department. He's one of my employees. So I go down there, and sure enough, it was one of these students that I had talked to three years ago. And he, w and he got, he'd be, as soon as I was done talking, he, he's like, Chad. And he's like, I wanted to thank you. And he got into the Ubuntu, his Ubuntu Loco team. He's been helping others online. Guy is hardcore now. I was like, yes, you know, success. Even if it was just that one kid that got something out of it, you know, it was just awesome. So it does make a difference. You know, talk, talk to the young people and tell them what's out there. Like I said, they don't have to use it, but at least they know there's a choice, right? Cool. Um, yeah. This, I mean, this is in education as with anywhere else in the business world. In the business world, we can, we can force you to. You're getting paid, right? We can force you. you you're going to change or you're going to get fired. Education is not quite that easy. Um, you know. uh, a, really hard, a, a, lot of, a lot of teachers have a really hard time with change. A lot of administrators have a really hard time with change. Education uh, is, is slow. Things do not change fast. Uh, so, and that's with anything. That's not just with open source, right? That's with anything. So the real problem here and really, the real problem is how can we better adapt, uh, adopt change? And that is the hardest. Notice I'm going to be raising lots of questions, maybe not giving the answers. But I'll try to give you some. We're getting there, right? And, and if there's any questions at any time, feel free to holler, especially since I'm flying through these slides. Uh, and I'll take questions at the end. The, the, the answer for me is success via small steps, OK? I did not take over the manager of IT position in the K-12 district and say, stop. Everyone must use Ubuntu now. Because, like, yeah, I would have lost my job, right? Um, but really, the, the answer was, you know, talking to my boss, do you know what open source is? No, he doesn't know what open source is. Uh, director of technology, right? Uh, great guy. He now runs Ubuntu, by the way. That was five years ago. Um, you know, well, Lee, here's what open source is. Do you use Firefox? Yeah, I use Firefox. That's open source. All of a sudden, he's like, oh. And see, this is why Firefox is so cool, because it's community oriented. And when there's a security patch, you get it immediately because, yay, open source, right? And so then all of a sudden, he starts getting it. And then all of a sudden, oh, have you tried open office? Well, check this out. You can, you can still you know, export it to a doc file. You can still you know, use it. And he starts liking that. It's very small steps. I did not say, you know, I did not wave, you know, I did not say we need to open, run open NMS now. And, you know, you will change to the open, we will, we will lead the way. Um, anyway, small steps. Moodle, K-12 education, fantastic project. Course management system, if, if your local school system is not doing online courses, they should be. Because when kids go to college, do you know how with the percentage of kids you, you take an online course throughout their career now? It's, it's something insane. It's like 95% of students do now. So if you go to college, you are going to be taking at least one of your courses online at some point. Yet, in high school, nobody, right? They should be using Moodle. Course management system developed by K-12 through people for K-12 through 12 
fantastic. In the higher ed, there's Sakai. Sakai directly competes with Blackboard. It's developed by colleges. Very cool stuff. Um, obviously, open office. This, this is one I'm going to talk about quite a bit in just a second here. Firefox already mentioned. I've already mentioned uh, Linux Terminal Service Project. Other cool things that you can use. You know, we, we, we use VNC a lot to get into machines and change them around when people didn't know and scare them, you know, move the mouse. They're like, ooh. All right, so, uh, but, you know, I was there for five years. You can just quickly add up that math. I actually did most of those changes in three years. Um, this was the big one. I got a lot of attention for this one. We moved the entire district over to Open Office and uh, Google Apps, a uh, combination of both. Completely got rid of Microsoft, saved $200,000 doing it. I, it's a, it's a medium-sized district. We only have 5,000 students, 12 locations, uh, 2,000 computers, right? So think about that. If you're in a city area, do you, can you imagine how much money you could save just by getting away from office? Insane amounts of money. Teachers are losing their jobs, right? <laughs> Small steps, too. That's not a huge... Now, it was hard. Don't get me wrong. I mean, my boss... I mean, they had... Pitch, uh, pitchforks and torches on his doorstep. We live in a small town, man. Everybody knows everybody. It was a tough transition. But we lived. You know, that was back in September. It's the end of the year now. People don't even talk about it anymore. At the beginning, it was hard. Change is hard. But you get through it, everybody forgets about it. Students didn't care. In fact, some students were like, awesome, I use that at home. Not to mention, we were then able to give, you know, the open disk, uh, uh, www.theopendisk.com. It goes back to social responsibility. I can, I can leave those at the office. If a student does not have Microsoft Office at home, you go to the office, can I please have one of those disks? Take it, take it home. Now he can do his homework. Right? Fantastic. Uh, later, after, you can ask questions to me about this stuff. I replaced all the, the websites with Drupal, saved about $20,000. Yes, it really does cost that much just for a school system to go with a proprietary system, have, have a contractor come in, do, do the website. Um, and we got way more functionality out of Drupal. I mean, I, I could do a whole other session on Drupal. You don't want me to, but I can. Uh, Fog, free and open ghost, it's a cloning system, you know? Uh, we completely got rid of uh, Semantic Ghost, Acronis is another, another ghost system. Use that, that is a fantastic product. They just had their 1,000th install. And I, I was like, wow, really? Because it is such a cool project. If you're in a, if you're in a huge uh, business or, or education environment, you need to look into Fog. And virtualization was actually a combination of free and open source. We did use VMware, but we also used OpenVZ, which is really cool, virtualization kernel style. Right, if anybody wants to talk geek later, I'll be happy to talk to you what I did with that stuff. Um, uh, on top of streamlining IT, you know, I had four people, and we managed, what, like I said, you know, uh, two, over, over, it was about, actually about 2,400 computers at 12 locations. You, Open source is great for stream, streamlining IT, giving your people some time to do innovative stuff. And right now, guaranteed at your local school district, they got a bunch of people running around like chickens with their head cuts off. They're getting paid $23,000 a year. Travesty is what it is. Very hard to implement open source software when you're running around like a chicken with your head cut off, right? Right. Any questions on any of this stuff? This, this is the beef right here. This is the meat. Okay. <laughs> Maybe it's spoiled meat. <laughs> How to get involved. So, so many ways. It's very important to keep in mind here. Well, I think it's my next slide, so I don't want to get ahead of myself. There are many, many ways to get involved. Um, and most of you are probably members of, of Linux user groups. Very, very great way to you know, get, get, get everyone involved in your Linux user group. And go to the school um, you know, once a year. Just start once a year. And, and hold a, a, an open source you know, fest where kids can ask questions or, or you know, just a, like a forum or whatever. You know, great, great way to get started. School boards I'll talk about a little more. Uh, <laughs> community events, you know, the library is holding a book fair. Get a booth and have CDs there. You guys already know this stuff. You're smart about this stuff. Computer clubs. It doesn't have to be a Linux club. Start, you know, if, volunteer some of your time. Start a computer club at the high school and get kids involved. It's not just about Linux, you know? Teach them networking, too. It's fine. Teach them Linux. Teach them networking, too. Uh, and, 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 you know, teach them Windows and Mac OS, too. They should know everything. It's not, it's not about being, you know, 
We like choice, right? Um, educational conferences is a great place. You know, if you have, you, you could actually go, have, I mean, every state has them, and you could actually set up a booth there, and you can actually talk directly to teachers and, and get involved that way and, you know, change their mindset. Software user groups, if, if anyone listens to my podcast, I'm sorry. And uh, also, <laughs> you may have heard me, I just, I recently, I don't know, a couple months ago, talked to uh, a, a room full of, it was a more intimidating room than this, believe it or not, because it was a room full of female financial directors for school systems. <laughs> and... It was an interesting group. I had a ball. You can listen to it. I, I'm, I put it up as a podcast. Um, but it ended up being one of the most productive half-hour presentations that I've ever done. Because I started saying, look at the money I saved, ladies. And they were like, oh, yeah, look at that. I'm like, man, we should be talking to our IT guys about this stuff. Man, we don't have to lay off 80 teachers. Yeah. Come on. Right. Sorry. I didn't, mean to be, I didn't mean to take everybody down again. Sorry. Um, uh, yeah, so software user groups could actually a really good spot. Find out if there's like you know an Oracle group in the area. Just go talk to them. Hey, you ever heard of MySQL? You might piss them off, but you might be productive. Um, and talk to politicians. I almost didn't put it on the list because you know, hello, Mr. Legislator. Uh, what? Did you hear me? Linux. Linux. You know what Linux is? I mean, you might as well talk to a wall a lot of the time. But you do need to take small steps, and you you know, and they have to listen to you. By the way. They're elected officials. So they do have a phone number. You can find it, and you can call them every single day if you want to. All right? The Shawshank Redemption, fill out the slip every day trick. Eventually, he's either going to, well, he's going he's gonna to have to listen, <laughs> or she, excuse me. Um, know when to talk and who to talk to. If your user group decides to go and get involved in the local, uh, 3.30, can you stand up for a second? If, if, if you decide to send someone from your user group, don't send someone that looks like this. <laughs> because you're not going to get anywhere. Thank you. <laughs> right? At least shave his beard and put a tie on him. Okay? <laughs> Sorry, I just had to do that, man. Um, <laughs> Uh, he will pay me back, I assure you. Uh, <laughs> uh, but, but, I'm, but I am being actually kind of serious. You know, if you're going to send someone to a school board, to, and the, by the way, school board has to, has to listen to you as well. They have to give you public, public input, right? If you're going to send someone, you know, I mean, I, I'm not trying to offend anybody, but put a tie on, try to look respectable, because and, and, they're not going to listen to you if you walk in there holding up a penguin and screaming about Linux. It's just not going to happen, right? Because they have no idea. Because it is the, I have no idea what the hell you're talking about factor at a school board meeting. I assure you, unless you are very fortunate, your, your school board doesn't have a clue. Open source software, what? <laughs> yeah, in my area, see, now, now keep in mind here, this wasn't actually a mistake. I tried to find a picture of a farmer. Now, no, I'm not disparaging farmers. The great people, I mean, and there's plenty of tech savvy farmers. We have a couple here. It's fantastic, but I'll tell you the story about my school board in just a second. I couldn't find a picture. Uh, three, three years ago, I had to go to my first school board meeting. And it went something like this. Um, uh, Mr. Wallenberg, oh, yes. Uh, are you, you're going to buy 300 more computers? Uh, now, when I buy a tractor, and I kid you not, this is what he said. When I buy a tractor, I don't have to replace it in three years. How come you're always replacing these computers? This is my first board meeting. This is my response. Uh, a John Deere tractor? <laughs> uh, very, very hard group that I had to deal with for several years to uh, get some of the, and every single, th single thing that I did, I had to get through this group of guys. Love them, I assure you. I, I, I say total jest, but that, that did happen to me. Um, there is the I have no idea what the hell you're talking about factor. If you go in there and start making jokes about, yeah, well, I see what you're saying, but I already said it to Dev Null, <laughs> they're not going to get it. <laughs> right? <laughs> not a good idea. Got to take it down. Make sure the guy you send can also take it down to the level, right? It's important. <laughs> How am I doing on time? Yeah. Went too fast, but that's all right. 
we're back to this. It takes a village to raise a child. Now, you are all members of a wonderful community. It's called the Linux community. And I love it. You love it. It's mainly an online community. Every once in a while, these weird people get together at Clemson University or other areas in the country. But, you know, mainly we're, we're an online community. But you also live in a real community. Believe it or not, some of you might not know that. You might be in the basement all the time like me. Uh, and that community needs help. Um, you know, Microsoft has deeply entrenched itself as the only player in town when it comes to federal, state, and local government. And I ask you this. You may be a plumber. You may be a truck driver. You may be a network manager. Whoever you are, that's not the only role that you can play in your community. And, you know, I, I say this. Try or just or, or become proactive in some way. It doesn't have to be going to school boards. But find out who to talk to. There's someone receptive in your area to this stuff. You just have to figure out who, and you just have to go talk to them. I ask you what role you play in your local community and whether or not you can step it up. Uh, and and it's, it's so important. I sped through all of that. Is there any questions for me whatsoever? Please, just hit me. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Sure. Right. Yeah, it's a big fat. It depends. It depends on is your local school board receptive to these kinds of things? And you should know by, you know, find out. Find out if you don't know. Uh, go to a meeting. Just hang out in the back, right? So it's all public forum. Um, I would say that there are some very, very, very good school boards. There are very good boards on university levels that will be receptive to this. In my experience, more than not, uh, they, they, they are not receptive to this type of thing, mainly because their internal departments are supposed to be making the decisions. If that is the case, it probably is better to seek out someone with affinity, maybe not the IT guy, maybe, maybe a science teacher. I don't know if he's in here. That, that's, yeah, man. Uh, maybe a science teacher that knows a lot about open source. You kind of have to seek out that person and make them proactive within. Like, like the, and, and that, that's important. Yes, sir. I thought that TechSoup made it trivial for a lot of um, public institutions to obtain Microsoft software licenses. It, it has. It is, it is quite inexpensive. Um, the, okay, so you want to know where I got that $200,000 when we got rid of an office? I can tell you. I, I give you the math. In fact, I can, I can, if you email me, which here's all my information, I can actually give you the sheet, the, the, the numbers. 2,000 licenses. You either go by the number of users or by the number of computers, the lower of, of the two. We had about 2,000 computers we needed to get. We were at a point where we had to upgrade to Office 2007. Our licensure was gone. Now, there is a greatly reduced price. If you go and try to buy Office 2007 and you're not part of an educational institution, what is it these days, like 90 bucks, 100 bucks? I don't know. It's outrageous. I don't, I don't know. For, well, for, for, for you, it's 150. For, for us, because we were in an academic alliance and we're K-12, it's actually reduced more, and it was about $50 per license. Do the quick math right there. 2,000 computers, $50 per license. Still a ton of money, and we're a small district. So, uh, yes, they, I mean, that is the thing, right? Microsoft's good, man. They reduce all the prices. Don't worry, you can run out of software. It's fine. Hey, we'll also uh, give your kids uh, certifications in our software, too. Very important. What's that? <laughs> right. You get, that's exactly right. You get the first one for free. It's, they, they, then they hook you. Yeah. And it's been that way for 20 years. Right, which is total bollocks at this point. You guys understand this, right? Because it's not about teaching a student uh, uh, Microsoft Office 2007. It's about teaching student how to use an Office suite. There are underlying things you can teach a student without using Microsoft. And not only that, but guess what? Every day, 2,000 businesses sign up for Google Apps. I mean, I, I, I don't know. We'll see what happens. But I got a feeling Open Office, or uh, uh, excuse me, Office, uh, uh, the suite that is Microsoft Office 
is uh, dying a slow death. I could be wrong. So a, kid, a, a middle schooler today won't be using Office 2007 when they get in the workplace. Anyway. Amen, brother. That's a fantastic point. The, the kids in, you know, in kindergarten to, to eighth grade, by the time they get to college, six years has passed. I don't think anyone in here knows what's going to be going on in six years from now in technology because it's crazy. Ah, you bring up the big question. Notice I didn't put Linux on my list of things that I implemented. <laughs> right, small steps via uh, open source. My, my goal was to actually move uh, as much as I could to open source. So when the day came that the underlying operating system actually did become agnostic, we could then move to Linux. Unfortunately, in Virginia, too many applications run by the state passed down, and how we get our money require Windows and Mac OS uh, 10. Principles, principles, great, great allies uh, to have. If you can get somebody on the inside, students are tough, though. I mean, students will love to adopt it, but technology-wise, you have a few star students in the district, and they don't want to let students get through with uh, different applications for security purposes. I know we've had students that, that wanted to excel in these areas, and they were told, no, you stick with the curriculum. So One one point to that, and then I'll, I'll take your question. Uh, so, you know, I, I told you it was hard. How did we even get away with putting open office on these machines, right? My boss is quite, he was, uh, my, my former boss, was quite, quite innovative. He was, I, I used to call him a used car salesman because he's real good at getting up in front and talking to people. And what he did was, you know, we had to upgrade Office 2000. We didn't have a choice. Our licenses were up. So we put a screenshot of Office 2007 up. He put a screenshot of Office 2003 up. And in the middle, he put open office. And he said, and it, this was with the uh, principals and administrators, before we actually rolled this out. We're trying to get some buy-in, right? And he said, which one of these is the least scary to you? Because this is the one we have to go to. And he pointed at the Office 2007. Or maybe this. This is what we're running now. And those principals were scared to death in <laughs> Office 2007. Like, no, we don't want to do that. So we got the buy-in. It was a little trick, you know? It, it, but it worked, and <laughs> we got the buy-in by the administration. We got the okay. Um, you know, it's just a, and you do have to be a little tricky. Yeah. I'm glad you brought that up. Um, I don't think I talked about it too much on the pie. I had a really cool opportunity to work with Anish Chopra. He was the Secretary of Technology for, for, for Virginia under King, and he um, is an open source advocate. I met him I, I, at an award ceremony, and you know, he, he, now he's the you know, CTO of the country. Uh, Obama just upped him, right? So I got to work with him, and uh, he, just before he left to work uh, for President Obama, he started this really cool initiative in Virginia. And it's worth talking about. I'm glad you said that. Uh, it's called a flex book. So we in Virginia now have a physics book that is a wiki. And 12, um, 12 teachers around the state, this is, by the way, this is completely open Creative Commons, so you can go tell your schools about this right now. Um, so it was created by 12 teachers in Virginia. It was reviewed by students and peers, teacher peers. And now uh, the curriculum of Virginia if you're, if you're going to take physics, you take it on an online wiki. So you're saving costs of the price in textbooks, and you're not learning off of a 35-year-old textbook. A lot of things have changed in 35 years with physics, right? So someone could find out something new about black matter tomorrow 
And the next day, the kids can be learning about it. Fantastic. All right, this is pretty obvious stuff to all of you, but not to educators, not to state entities. Awesome initiative. Go Anish Chopra. This is the CTO of the country now. That's pretty hopeful, isn't it? He's a really cool guy. I did the um, ideas.virginia.gov, which was the first open source uh, uh, website for the state of Virginia, and he, um, he supported that. He, he, he initialized that. So a really cool guy. Um, anyway, that's just an aside. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. With it, they have Zellers, right? And um, with that, they had foresight, these school districts, to say, you know, we're going to have to migrate, especially the one that I work with closely. And they were really, really engaged about moving towards, I'm going to say Linux, but basically open source. Sure. They're very receptive. Find out who they are. That, that's a great point. That, it was a really ugly transition when Novell uh, bought uh, SUSE, and they started moving because the old Novell system was not oh, uh, SUSE, right? It was a, a completely different ball game, and that, so that migration has been a little, a little tough. But it is the perfect opportunity if the IT managers are already used to that to talk to them. Absolutely, and that's why I'm here. It is all about a grassroots effort without a doubt. Yes, sir. Uh, one of my friends, he recently started one of the Jackson Global Community College, and they told him, you need Office 2007 to complete and graduate the typing course. He said, dude, I don't know what I'm going to do because I can't afford that. I said, well, why don't you use open office? He said, they told me I can't. I have to have more of uh, that's a travesty. I mean, it's social responsibility. I mean, this is, this is absolutely ridiculous. And it is about user, user education. You know, it's a huge part of this, which I didn't quite talk about. But it is important that we educate just the base user on even what open office. And people, people don't even know that open office exists. Yes, sir. Get them to commit. Big, fat right. Governor's race in Georgia. Big fat governor's race. All you got to do is show up these little barbecues that they have, and you pigeonhole every single one of them and say, and you don't get too far ahead of them, but say, would you be open to an idea like this that could save the state of Georgia potentially That's X a million dollars? Great point. What are they going to say? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And that's the person you ask when they're all on stage. They look like the smart superstar. Everybody else gets nervous and starts asking their flunkies on the campaign team to, to get them on the stage. That's a, that's, a, that's a fantastic point. It is the perfect time to get commitments out of politicians when they're coming up for elections. So that's a very, very good point. Yeah, another. Yeah, that's a that great success story. That's a good, good point. Yeah. Uh, yes, ma'am. I just wanted to say I didn't hear the end of, of what you were saying about the students in community college. I worked at a feeder school and I just completed a degree at the university where my instructor said, "You must have Microsoft to do X, Y, and Z, whatever. You must have Microsoft this. You must have Windows that. Yeah. You must have all of this." Yeah. And I did most of my stuff with the software and told them. Oh, you did. Tell the difference. Awesome. Yeah. So my wife does the same thing. <laughs> Yeah, amen. <laughs> amen. As long as it's open source initiatives.
<laughs> Otherwise, you know. Uh, you serve first? Yeah. Indeed, sir. And if you do not do it, who will? Right? It's us. It's us. Plant the seeds, man. That's why I go talk to high schoolers. <laughs> Woo! Just be careful you don't twist too hard. Right? But I'm going to, uh, I, I'm starting to run out of time. I'm going to uh, get this question, but before I do, because we might run uh, to the end here, just want to say this is where you can, you know, contact me. I love this. This is what I, this is why I love talking to people about this stuff. I love the dialogue. So if you have specific questions, feel free to contact me. I'd be happy to help you in any possible way I can. Okay? Yes, ma'am. You got money. Toys, All right. We do have kids who say mommy and daddy say no, and they have they put open toys on their on their sticks. Cool. They take it home, parents download it. That's great. But teachers don't care, and it's trickling up, and now we're lost the church in the Google Doc. Grassroots, baby. So, yeah. It's trickling up. It's just taking us a while. T teacher. I have the yeah, absolutely. I, I, that's one thing I didn't mention. I have a hit by the get hit by a bus rule as a, as an IT administrator. You know, go ahead and implement Drupal, but make sure that if you get hit by a bus, somebody else can do it, right? I, I cross trained my my assistant manager, and I just left my job, and you know he picked up that that I did my job, right? Uh, yes, ma'am. Um, I am a teacher and fairly new to all. Teachers, man, yeah. To, to learn learn the tools, there are a lot. I mean, if, you know, especially with Open Office, there's a ton of resources. Even just go to YouTube, although with the teachers probably blocked at school, but download them at home and bring them in. <laughs> OpenOffice.org has, Open, Open has. Yeah, yeah. In fact, there's an open uh, open source book, I believe, on Open Office that you can just download in PDF form and also give. Uh, a lot, there's a lot. There's a lot of uh, great free resources. Uh, if you shoot me an email, I'll, I'll give you a list. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. That, yeah. That's a great point. So if you're running Moodle at your at your school district, you can actually just dump the course in. It's really cool. It's like an import. And boom, you've got training. And we actually, I'm glad you pointed that out. You know, we actually trained our teachers on OpenOffice through Moodle and gave them recertification uh, points, which is, uh, so they were actually rewarded for learning it, which is kind of a cool way to do it. You have to have support to do that, of course. Yes, sir. For education, now see, I'm an IT guy. You want to answer that question? Sure. Um, a lot of schools across the country are facing uh, a problem that uh, South Carolina is facing right now. Is that uh, they're using a program called SAS, where it's free or something else. Yeah. This is their student management program. Yeah. Um, I represent a company called OS for Ed, and uh, as well as volunteer my time for Open Tutor. And I also, I'm the founder of the Open Tutor Education Program. We are developing right now a program called Open Six. And it's an open student information system. It is designed to eventually snap into Moodle, uh, snap into Mahara, and to replace uh, any need there would be for uh, SAS ESP or PowerSchool. And it is going to be open source and free. You can visit us now at opensys.com. We are in, uh, we are in beta on MySQL. We have a fully running version with Postgres specific just from some legacy centers that we're building up from. We hope to have a full running Specifically for uh, educators and, and 
Is there anything new um, other than that down the pipeline that maybe teachers can utilize? You know, any, any good things? Check it out there. Cool. There's a, there's a beautiful CD-ROM that they've compiled that has uh, about 80% of the repository that we have, as well as uh, the OpenTutor.org class education page, which you can have to get to several different um, education activity management tools, like Mahara and Moodle, that are uh, one-click install. Uh, yeah. I'm, a, I'm also a huge fan of the Open Disk, which I already mentioned, which also has the Open Education Disk, uh, where you can get a lot of cool stuff that's open source that runs on Windows, uh, if you're in a Windows environment. As far as cutting edge, I'm, I'm not. Uh, unfortunately, I'm the guy who runs Xenos and monitors network traffic. Someone else handles instructional software, which I do get involved with it. Like, I'm just I'm in a job transition, so I, I don't know the cutting edge. So if anybody else has any cool things, please shout them out. I'm, we're almost done here, I think. Good question. See, I knew somebody was going to answer that. Okay. Uh, so two, two, two initiatives. First was, I got two minutes, all right, real quick. Um, the, the first initiative was VMware. We actually went with the VMware cluster. Uh, and so we did spend money on that. Now, no matter what, whether it's free or open source, or if you virtualize, virtualize your uh, server environment, you are going to save a lot of money, on, on pat particularly on power costs. $23,000 a month by consolidating from 18 servers to three. <laughs> In power costs, there's a calculator on a VMware site that you can use just in power costs. Do you believe that? Crazy. You can sell it real easy if you start doing those numbers. And then also a open uh, open VZ cluster. Uh, I've talked about it on my podcast. You can actually check that out. But we clustered um, two open VZ uh, boxes together and ran. Uh, you know, that's a, that's a shared kernel uh, virtualization solution that you can. Our sync actually syncs the virtual machine, so you have redundancy. Really cool setup. We did a lot of our web dev stuff on that. And I'd be happy to talk geek about you know OpenVZ and stuff with anybody uh, after after this or whatever. Anything else? My time's just about up. Thank you all so much. I love the dialogue, and you know keep up the good fight. If I can help you in any way, please contact me. Okay. Thank you. This work was recorded by View Digital Media and is licensed under a Creative Commons Attribution Share Alike version 3.0. For more information about the Southeast Linux Fest, visit southeastlinuxfest.org.